Hello everyone, this is Jeffrey G97 and welcome to the video. Um, sorry it's been a little while uh, to make a video. I've just been busy from one day and the other day. Uh, yesterday we had a power outage, but thankfully we have our power back and we're back on uh, schedule. So this is today I'm going to be using the Mazda Atenza sedan L package around the mall. 30 minute endurance race. I'll show you guys the full guide. Uh, this is a challenge that I had from Red Eye GT the other day. Uh, so I'll show you guys very first before we get any further to the episode. If you guys did the time trial challenge for the Porsche challenge, uh, you should re already received your 911 RSR Grade 3 race car with a unique uh, pig livery. Uh, the other thing is uh, we have a new few batches of daily races. So here's a look at what we have uh, to scoop out of the circuit. Uh, it's going to be our race where nothing changes for our driver or safety rating. Mount Panorama, uh, grade 3 race in the center. And then for the grade 4 class, you have the trial mountain circuit. So I'll be covering all of those races in the near future uh, whenever I do my daily races. Um, as you can also see at the top right corner, we do have three special tabs on the top right of the corner the viewers campaign the bonus campaign and the showdown at uh, Amsterdam all right now I'll show you guys how to get the car you know click on the Asia Pacific click on Mazda you can click on showroom and it's gonna be this red car right here so it's gonna be between the Mazda 3 and the small uh, roaster turning car uh, 374 performance points is the stock points for this car it's gonna cost you right at 40,000 credits uh, you can tell by the stats it's, it's more like a if this was a Forza game probably a D-class car uh, only 172 horsepower 300 pounds of torque uh, pretty heavy car as well weighing at about 3,500 pounds and the aspiration is for turbo uh, so that's how you get a car that's where you found it you can also wait for a prize car as well uh, show you guys now the livery that I'm going to be using for the race um, if you guys want to follow me here's my gamer tag for Grand Terminal 7 Jeffrey Tree Tag 7 YT and usually the best way to find me is I make uh, Tokyo screenshots uh, so here's the livery I'll be using it's this amazing uh, livery from Grand Trail Missile 4 with Goodyear. I believe this was originally for the, um, I think it was the RX-8 uh, cup car. All the way back in Grand Trail Missile 4. Where I believe you won to Tsukuba twice in, in the one event in Grand Trail Missile 4. Uh, you will get this car. So, I just love how it looks. Of course, it's a Grand Trail 4 livery, so it just brings back the days of playing uh, that game. Um, so, if you guys do not want to use this livery, but you want to have your own livery, uh, then no, no problem. I'll show you guys the parts. Alright, so we're going to start off with the wheels first. I'll be able to show you guys the particular rims and the settings you need for the rims. So, the rims is going to be Ray's Gram Lights. 570. Uh, make sure they're 20 inch uh, for the diameter and make sure the offset is wide. For the custom parts, the front is going to be type A. The side is going to be type A as well. Custom wing set for the wing. The options is make sure the wing is high. And that the end plate is number seven. And for racing items, which is optional, hood pin is type B, and the tail hook is type B as well. Uh, there's no roll cage. Uh, and if you want you guys to match up with the other items as well, uh, here's the plate, uh, type A rear only for the license plate. Light bulb, uh, it's super cool at 9500K. Here's a look at the other headlights for the car. 
and for a caliber color, um, doesn't matter what color it is, um, I'm going to do blue. And that's going to be it for the GT Auto parts for the car. Okay, so here are the two new parts. I'm going to show you guys now the parts. If you, I'm going to move the cursor, and when it stops, is what the parts you guys need. You'll see some parts will be purchased already. Um, what when the cursor stops, that's the part you need. So stage production one for sports, for club sports, you need the high lift camshaft and weight reduction stage two. Semi racing, uh, racing crankshaft, fully customized computer, low RPM turbocharger. Weight reduction stage 3 and increased body rigidity. For racing, here's engine balance tuning, polished ports, anti lag system, racing intercooler, racing L filter, racing muffler, racing exhaust manifold, racing brake pads, racing brake kit, fully customized suspension, uh, racing clutch and flywheel, and torque factoring center. Uh, fully customizable racing transmission and you want to be using the racing soft tires. Uh, also for extreme, uh, just to be on the safe side, we're going to go ahead and purchase intermediate tires uh, just in case if we have um, rain to come on the way at this race. Now I'm not going to purchase any ultimate parts, I'm going to show you guys what the ultimate parts, what they consist of. So you have titanium connecting rods and pistons and carbon propeller shaft and that is basically it all the tuning parts uh, for the car and now I'm going to show you guys the setup itself what you'll need uh, so I'm going to have the car have racing softs for this build and, and if it does rain I do recommend switching racing intermediates. Um, I'll show you guys later of what to look out for. Suspension is going to be fully customized. Uh, you guys are more welcome to copy the numbers you see on the screen. If not, it, you can do your own numbers. Uh, but I do recommend doing the torque victoring numbers, being 50-50. The front downforce is going to be 50. The rear downforce is going to be 185. Uh, for the output adjustment for the ECU, uh, just keep it at 100. Fully customized racing transmission uh, that's what you'll be using for your transmission. Uh, 310 is what I recommend doing. Uh, there isn't any fine tune there. Uh, turbocharger, low RPM, anti lag system, uh, set that to strong, racing intercooler. Uh, the intake and exhaust, every category is going to be racing, uh, racing brakes and brake pads, racing clutch and flywheel. And everything you see that's installed is what you'll need uh, for the car, for the engine tuning and for the bodywork. So this car does take a lot of upgrades. And unfortunately, the car will be pretty much 30 points plus uh, below the 700 point cut line. Um, but to show you guys the car first, uh, this car really has some strong handling. Um, it can take these turns pretty quick. I do recommend driving it gear higher than the recommendation uh, from the red uh, square here. Um, since this car has a low RPM turbocharger, you will also need to shift the car very early as well. Uh, probably when you, it's probably at least a fourth full, that's what I recommend doing, as will slap the Subaru. Heading to the main straight now, I'm going to show you guys what you'll be looking at for the top speed as we slowly make our way up to the front um, as you can see how um, switch, switching gears is important because if you don't switch the gears in time your car is going to stall out um, as you can see this car doesn't really produce a lot of speed as we're just about in the mid 160s um, you can tell some of the cars are actually pulling away from us so we're going to rely mainly on uh, these low speed corners uh, just to make up some time as we're making some moves, we're right there, going to try to be at the top 10 very shortly. Um, we're going to make a move on the Mustang and on the Mitsubishi. We're going to go three wide, temporary, and we'll be able to pass both those cars. 
having a nice slipstream from the Lamborghini is helping us as well as we're promoting past the Honda NSX uh, just to get inside the top 10 uh, we're going to follow the Lamborghini through this turn give it a little slight little push as we do make contact with the Honda um, we're going to stick with the Lamborghini uh, at the end of this corner we're going to pull it to the side um, try to pass it but we won't be able to pass it uh, we'll be side by side for a little bit um, but it will eventually we'll pull up ahead and cleanly pass this and we'll also uh, we'll be side by side with the Honda as well uh, so like I said the car really does not have that much speed um, but the braking and the handling itself does make up for it also for the acceleration as we're going to also easily pass the BMW uh, moving us to P8 as we head to the other uh, main straight as you can see this car also has some pretty decent fuel uh, mileage as well now I will show you guys when to adjust it just to stretch out your fuel uh, till you pit on lap 3 um, but as right now we're making a little steady progress to the front we're going to break a little bit move down to 5th gear and then through here we're going to be right at 4th, 3rd gear and then we're going to try to make a, a move on the DB9 so we're going to break, we're going to make a move on the outside and we'll take 7th place very nice smooth pass uh, from the car like I said this car really does have smooth strong handling uh, so right now all the way to P7 as we're about to soon approach the Michelin Bridge uh, this car feels very smooth um, feels really good especially with the fresh tires as you can see we're going to also move down to 5th gear stay close to that little curb as you can see we make a lot of time up on the Genesis itself um, staying close to the other curbs as you can see we're really getting really close to it we're going to wait make a move bump it out of the way and then we'll make our way up to P6 at the end of lap 1 alright so we're going to fast forward now to lap 2 um, over halfway through the lap we now move to P5 we're actually trying to make a move to P4 uh, from the orange and black Lexus uh, you can see we already picked up a 1 second penalty which we do have to serve which is kind of annoying um, but that's the way it ha sometimes happens uh, make a move on the Lexus and we'll temporarily we'll be up to P4 uh, but like I said we'll have to serve the penalty so we'll eventually we'll go back to P5 um, as we get close to the Suzuki Swift uh, we're going to pull aside and serve that penalty real quick but thankfully uh, since this car does have great handling we'll be able to pack uh, quickly uh, make up for the lost time and try to make a move on both the Lexus and the Suzuki uh, now you just saw me just now switch to fuel map 3 uh, for the fuel just doing that just to be on the safe side because we're going to try to stretch out our fuel all the way to lap 3 uh, for us to pit uh, you can just see also the front tires are pretty much halfway worn uh, so the softs do feel good um, but like I said the bad part about it is they kind of wear pretty quickly as we're going to make a move on the Lex itself it is a little slight contact um, and you'll see here the Suzuki switch is going to pull out make its pit stop um, unfortunately we are at a bad spot we had to be forced out the track and unfortunately even though we kind of went back to the track as soon as we can uh, we'll pick up a half a second penalty which is kind of annoying uh, because we really didn't gain any ground uh, on the Lexus right there um, lap 3 we're going to pit uh, we thankfully did save enough fuel uh, just to make it to the pits we're actually coasting at this point uh, so we're going to come inside the pits of course change to new uh, fresh uh, frozen soft tires you can just see the front tires are just basically trash they're just worn out uh, while the rear tires are in really good shape the front tires are not and usually the bad part about this is uh, with Le Mans if you do this race um, you actually do lose a lot of time compared to the AI so we're going to change tires real quick and we're going to add fuel all the way up to 100% 
and we'll be back on our way to the track. Um, and like I said, you'll just lose a lot of time doing this. Unfortunately, it's just a bug in the game. Uh, you can see that came up behind the Porsche, lost a lot of time to Lexus. Um, I'm going to move the fuel map back down to number one. Uh, fast forward to lap five. Uh, we, I'm going to switch it to fuel map three or four. And now back to number three. Um, as we're about to soon approach uh, the other few turns after the uh, missile in straight. As you can also see, the wipers are activating. Uh, we actually do have rain in the area. As we hit purple, after that sector, but unfortunately, we'll have to make a two and a half second penalty. Uh, so we'll definitely will slow down a lot uh, through here, which is pretty annoying. Um, as you can see, here's the rain. And I'll basically going to do is make a gamble and we're going to stay out for one more lap. As you can see the car still drives fine. It feels good still. Um, despite having rain in the, uh, in the area. Uh, we can see how smooth the, the car just turns around that uh, Michelin corner. So we're easily going to gently make these turns. As you can see, the Corvette is entering in the pits. Uh, like I said, we're going to do a little risk and just try to stay out with the Viper and try to see if we can actually carefully drive uh, around the mall in this rain and try to see if we can also try to make up some ground on the Viper as well. Alright, so later on lap 6 we picked up again another 2.5 second penalty but we do see the Viper in our sights. Um, you can see we do have plenty of water on the track as, as you can see our water meter is nearly halfway filled up. Um, and surprisingly the front tires are actually not in bad shape as they were in the first stint. Um, but like I said we're going to have to stop or slow down here for 2.5 seconds to serve our penalty for just cutting the course. Which is, of course, is annoying. Um, we're gonna pit here, and we're gonna get some new fresh softs and some fuel. Um, the rain is leaving, as you can see. We had the nice blue sky picking out. Uh, we're gonna gently drive this corner. At this point, I was struggling for grip. So was the Viper. Um, the car was really tight. Really didn't, felt like it had any grip whatsoever because of the track being on the wet stage. Um, you can see how much time we're picking up on the Viper itself. Um, Viper going very slow. We got to make a move right here. We got side by side, and we do make a pass for the lead with the Viper, but uh, mess up that turn. And despite trying to get back on the track and trying to have a safe uh, return, uh, we picked up another second penalty, which is pretty annoying. So we're gonna come inside the pits, thankfully with enough fuel and we're going to get some new fresh tires and some fuel uh, just enough fuel to last for the rest of the race we don't have to fill it all the way up this is all about time um, you can see this is going to be our last lap as we got about three minutes left in this race um, so timing is everything at this final stint um, of the race and you'll see the AI uh, they will also fill up their fuel all the, all the way to as most uh, just for one lap not the whole 100% just enough for one lap so we just lost about five seconds to the leader uh, but I'm going to try to do is to quickly as soon as I can before the track dries up to chase down the Viper take the lead and try to build enough gap uh, where I can serve the penalty and still keep the lead so you can already see we're making huge grounds on the Viper cutting that lead very quickly around these corners. Uh, I think it's still trying, struggling for grip at this track. So we make a great turn exit out here. And we're also at the striking range as we will have that nice slipstream uh, coming from the Viper. 
as we head to the main street, as we're about to approach our very first uh, turn out of the two turns at the main street. So we're right behind it. Going to make a move right the first turn. We're going to break, close the gap, try to set up a pass. We're going to do it right here. Keep it clean. Very nice and tidy move on the Viper itself. And we'll take the lead. Not only that, but we'll also build up such a big lead. Enough big lead. We'll serve the penalty, extend the lead some more, and we'll be able to win this race. Uh, we got very lucky with that rain coming out. Um, I believe you could still win this on the dries, but it's going to be very hard if you're going to do that. So there's the full result itself. Uh, the Viper did get the fastest lap, but I think we probably could have done a similar lap time with the Viper. Got to clean our bonus despite making lots of contact with the other drivers as well. Um, but that is going to be it at the race at Le Mans using the Tinza. Uh, sedan. Uh, really enjoyed the challenge, um, even though it quite felt stressful at some times. But a real good challenge. Um, if you want to challenge at Lamal, uh, this one would definitely be it right here. Um, but had a lot of fun doing this challenge. Uh, really loved how the car felt. Car felt great all day. Uh, race despite uh, the brain coming out and making the car tight, uh, losing the grip. Uh, handling's great. Uh, the only bad part is, of course, the speed. Uh, not carrying, not having a lot of speed in the car. Um, so if you guys do want to try it, you can. And if you guys want to check out my last video uh, that I made using Alfa Romeo engine swap, check that video out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope this video was entertaining for you and you can try us out them all. Hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.